Greetings. Welcome to Restoration Center's Women of Worth and Accessory Prayer with co-pastor Simone Keys. Join us every Saturday night at 9 p.m. As Isaiah 61 and 3 says, Give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Now here's co-pastor Keys with tonight's word. I love being outside and I just want to say welcome to Wild Prayer Talks and those of you on tonight. Hi, Danielle. Well, tonight as we get started, I love, as you all know, I love Easter week. And on yesterday, we ended with revival in the house and a lot of you, you were celebrating and commemorating the seven last sayings of Jesus Christ on the cross. Hi, Pastor Colette Harris. And Tonight, Saturday night, Saturday night, just want to read from Matthew, the 27th chapter, starting at the 62nd verse. There's a word from the Lord, the God at the tomb. This was after Jesus was crucified and taken off the cross and Joseph of, of Amorthea of went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus so that it would be protected and the guards went to, the soldiers went to Pilate because the tomb is about to be guarded. Let me read it. The next day on the Sabbath, the leading priests and the Pharisees went to, went to see Pilate. They told him, sir, remember what that deceiver once said while he was still alive. Y'all, they talking about Jesus. After three days, I'll rise from the dead. So we request that you seal the tomb until the third day. This will prevent his disciples from coming and stealing his body and then telling everyone he was raised from the dead. If that happens, we'll be worse off than we were at first. This is from the New Living Translation. Paula replied, take guards and secure it the best you can. So they sealed the tomb and posted guards to protect it. And right now, if I was with um, Louisiana Home and Foreign Mission, they would be preaching right now that they put a rock inside of a rock. They put the rock, who is Jesus, inside of a rock and put a rock there to protect what was going on. But what they didn't understand, what the guards didn't understand was that even though they put that rock there, even though they were trying to, as they say, prevent the disciples from um, stealing his body, the plan was already in motion. The plan was already in motion. They didn't see Jesus. They didn't know what was going on. But guess what? Jesus was still working for our behalf. Even though, even though he was crucified, that Saturday, the word of God, which I'm going to read in 1 Peter, said that Jesus began preaching to set the captives, captives free. He began, he opened and he went to hell and started preaching. Those who had died in the cross, died, died with the promise. That those, as they say in Hebrews, as they say in Hebrews, right, that God went to preach, that Jesus went to preach to the Hall of Faith, those who had, who had died in the Lord, but who had not yet received the promise. Let me go, my, my son said, go to the scripture. Yes, I will in First Peter. Let me read it to you. And it says, First Peter chapter 3, 18 to 21. Because Christ also suffered once for, for sins, the just for the unjust to bring you to God by being put to death in the flesh, but by being made alive in the spirit. And he went and preached to the spirits in prison after they were disobedient long ago when God patiently waited in the days of Noah as, on, as an ark was being constructed, that his eight souls were delivered through water. And this prefigured baptism, which now saves you, not the washing off of the physical dirt, but by the pledge of good conscience to God, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who went into heaven and is at the right hand of God with the angels and authorities and powers subject to him. Hallelujah. Say it ain't so. My God, my God, my God, my God. Guess what? And it said in Matthew 12, 40 it was prophesied for just as Jonah was in the belly of the huge fish for three days and three nights so the son of man would be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights but what blessed me was 
why we didn't realize what was going on. Why there are times when we don't see Jesus. See, they didn't see Jesus. They said, you know, Jesus is dead. They understood. They heard that he was going to rise again on that third day. But that Saturday when Jesus was preaching and ministering, setting the captives free, what God, what God ministered to me was, they didn't know what was going on. And a lot of times in our lives, we are in situations and we don't know what's going on. We can, we feel like we can't see Jesus. You know, we don't understand. You know, the, the saying is trust him when you can't trace him. But guess what? When we don't see him, when we are in relationship and a fellowship of Jesus Christ, when we don't see him, we think it's not here. Not that God is working on our behalf. He's on our behalf. He's taking care of situations. Hallelujah. We don't have to see him. We just got a feeling. We know that he is there. Because when you're in relationship, when you're in relationship, when you know somebody, hallelujah, we talk about the word um, intimacy, knowing who Jesus is. You can feel him. You know he is right there. You know that somebody's praying for you. You know that your only way you got through a situation because we know that God was protecting you. We know that he sent a host of angels to, to protect you. We know that he that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. They, the guards didn't know that Jesus was still working, that the plan was still going through. They thought they was doing something by putting a stone in front of the tomb. They didn't understand who Jesus was, who Jesus is. And we got to understand. I talk to people all the time because that story, even though it's old, old, even though they have posters and different things, that it always blesses me when we talk about those footprints in the sand. Because remember, as the story goes, when the man looked over his life, when he thought that they should have been three footprints, when he thought they should have been four, and he only saw two, is because Jesus was carrying him. Guess what? Jesus is carrying us. So on that Saturday, he was ministering. My God, he was working out the plan, fulfilling the prophecy. So then on that Sunday, hallelujah, on that Sunday morning, when the women went to the tomb, don't play with us. Hallelujah. When the women went to the tomb and, they, and the angel said, the one you're looking for is not here. But as the old preachers would say, we're going to wait until tomorrow because right now, it's just Saturday. Praise God that we serve a living, risen, a risen Savior, a living Savior that takes care of things. Hallelujah. That takes care of things. He's working, always working in our behalf. Hallelujah. But guess what? You got to be in the family. You got to be in relationship. So on tonight, on tonight, on tonight. Before we get off, hallelujah, I just want to offer Christ to somebody tonight. I want to offer some, I, because a lot of times, you know, as I said last week, a lot of times we criticize people who come to church on Easter. You know, we make fun. We say, oh, they, that's the Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter crowd. Who cares? When they come on that Easter Sunday, they'll have a lot of people on there tomorrow. A lot of people. They're going to have a lot of people upset because the, because they always sit in that same seat and a visitor might be in it. Guess what? Minister. Minister. Talk to them. Because guess what? They came. They're going to come tomorrow. They came Easter Sunday. And on that Sunday, on tomorrow, you preach Christ. You tell them, guess what? You came here, you came here today. And it was all in the plan because Jesus has been working on your behalf. Let them know. Let them know. Yes, yes, let them know. We don't know. Some might come in pink suits. Some come, might come in pink leather pants. Some might come in um, in pink butt shorts. Who knows? But when they come into the sanctuary, what we do, we minister. We minister. We minister. Jesus is working on your behalf. Hallelujah. If y'all don't know what butt shorts, you know, Daisy Dukes, booty shorts, whatever, we're going to minister. Hallelujah. Guess what? God is so good. And tonight, I offer Christ to somebody. You may be watching. You may feel like, you know what? I've been praying. I've been praying so long. And I just feel like my prayers aren't answered. Listen, don't you give up on Christ because he's not giving up on you. 
ask God to enter into your life tonight. Say, Lord, I need you. I've been in the same place and I'm looking back in my life and I just feel like, God, I've been all in rough situations. God, I need you to carry me. Start calling out to him. Start just saying, God, I need you. I need you. I need you. Hallelujah. Just as Pastor Lindsay is saying, God is protecting us. He's protecting you. You just say, Lord, I just want to be a part of the family. I want to be in fellowship. I want to be in fellowship and just call out to him. Just say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm admitting to you I'm a sinner, Lord. Right now, dear God, I believe that, that, you, that you lived, that you died, and that you ro rose from the dead. And you're coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. You're coming back for me, God. Let them know that, yes, that you believe that you're a sinner. But you're ready to get into the family of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're ready to get into the family of God. And let them accept you. Listen, don't worry about don't worry about it. If you decide to go somewhere, we say go to, go to go to the temple tomorrow, go to the sanctuary, go and get in fellowship tomorrow. Don't worry about what you have or what you don't have. Because you know why you go and you're going to see Jesus. We want you to come and see Jesus. Hallelujah. Accept him. Accept him today. Accept him tonight. Don't wait. Don't wait. Accept him right now in Jesus' name. Right now, God, we just say thank you, Father, for protecting us, God, in the name of Jesus. Dear God, we thank you, Father, for this weekend. Dear God, we thank you, dear God, as we celebrated you being on the cross, Father, and dying for our sins. Dying right now, dear God, just taking care of us in the name of Jesus. And right now, Father, right now, dear God, Saturday night, dear God, Saturday, Sabbath day, dear God, you are still working, dear God. You're still working, dear God. The Jews' is celebration, they have stopped after sundown. After, listen, God, but you, Lord have mercy, God, you're always working on our behalf and protecting us. And dear God, on tomorrow, as we celebrate your resurrection, God, we know, Father, we serve a risen Savior. A living Savior, God. Hallelujah. And you're just taking care of us. So right now, dear God, if there's somebody that needs to know you as their personal Savior, as they call out to you, dear God, that you hold them in the name of Jesus. And then tonight, dear God, we're praying, dear God. We're reaching out to grieving hearts, Father. We're praying for the for the Bradley family, the loss of their brother, God. They buried him and laid him to rest, dear God, in the name of Jesus. We pray that you take care of that family, Father, in Jesus' name. And those, dear God, I call out my... My sister's name, Sandra Coleman, to God tonight, and, and Pastor Brown, to God, those who have lost, those who are close for them to them to, tonight, to God. We pray for them right now, to God. We pray for those who are sick, to God. We ask that you touch their bodies. We pray healing right now in the name of Jesus. We pray healing, to God, for Sister Julia Jameson. We pray healing, to God, on Deacon Bobby Scott, to God. We pray healing right now in the name of Jesus, of Brother Oscar Jennings and Mary Jennings and those who may have forgotten. Touch right now, God. And we pray to God for Aspen, God. I don't know if Aspen Thomas is home right now, to God. Nisha, just send me a message. We're praying for her right now, to God. We're praying for the family. Because, the God, we pray to God that she would be home, Father. So we continuously pray for Aspen for her strength and her family strength. And right now, God, we pray for those just as you put names on the screen to God. Cover them right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We give you the praise, God. We give you the praise. We give you your praise and the honor. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Guess what? Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, hallelujah, because he lives, we are here right now. All fear is gone. Because he lives, thank you, Jesus. Because we know he holds tomorrow. And our lives are worth living for because our Savior lives. Have a blessed night. He's working in your behalf. Good night, everybody. I love you all. Hallelujah.